Hi, this is Dr. Ryan Kazemi. Atraumatic or non-invasive extraction of teeth are critical in preservation of the supporting bone and soft tissue, which are important as a foundation for dental implant replacement. This is particularly important in the aesthetic zone, uh, where the bone is very thin and excessive forces during the elevation can result in fracture of the bone and its ultimate resorption. This in turn results in loss of bone and soft tissue with defects that are not only insufficient for implant placement, but also uh, compromised from aesthetic standpoint. Atraumatic extraction of teeth can be done with conventional elevators and forceps. However, it requires uh, great skills and experience to do properly. Today, I would like to demonstrate an alternative technique using specialized instruments that are designed for extraction of residual roots in an atraumatic fashion. When implemented properly, this technique helps to preserve the thin buccal plate of bone and also its supporting soft tissue. It also benefits the patient with a faster recovery and less pain as it uh, avoids an excessive tissue flaps or manipulation. This unique surgical instrumentation kit consists of a handle with its rotating platform, a bite plate, uh, specially designed retaining pins, and flexible uh, pulley cables. To demonstrate this technique, let's take a look at this patient who presented with a fractured upper uh, central incisor with a uh, retained root. With conventional techniques, uh, the surgeon would need to elevate the tooth using lateral forces uh, on the crestal bone and expand the alveolus until the tooth is subluxated and removed. This often results in fracture of the extremely thin buccal plate of bone and its ultimate resorption. Instead, here we'll first use a periotome to disrupt the gingival attachment. Depending on the length of the root, the density of the bone, and the stability of the root, it might be necessary to slightly mobilize the root using a uh, mesiodistally directed force uh, with a small elevator. Also, the coronal aspect of the tooth must be removed until the root chamber and the canal is reached. So, to begin, a precise channel is prepared in the canal using a uh, surgical burr. Next, a corresponding retaining pin is inserted in the prepared channel and twisted until it's tightened in place. The threads provide a, a good mechanical retention of the pins in the root. The handle has a rotating knob and several slots for insertion of the pulley cables. It also has a bite platform that rests on the adjacent teeth for a uh, stable support. So next, we'll position one end of the pulley cable in the retaining pin, while placing the other end in one of the slots in the handle. It's important that the handle and the pulley are positioned in a way that the cable comes out relatively straight out of the tooth and right down the axis of the root that is to be extracted. At this time, the knob is rotated clockwise until some resistance is felt. Now we'll confirm again that the cable is relatively straight and that the handle platform is uh, quite stable on the adjacent teeth. Next, we'll rotate the knob until resistance is felt and then wait about 30 seconds and then rotate it again for one to two turns. We're going to repeat this intermittent slow rotation and further tightening of the cable with pauses in between until the root is gradually mobilized and then displaced out of the socket. Often a popping sound is heard as the root emerges out of the socket. And here is the root with the retaining pin in place. And here is the socket with the intact uh, buccal plate of bone and soft tissue. Uh, the side can be gently curated and now ready for immediate implant placement if planned. So 
now with complete preservation of the alveolar bone, we can proceed with immediate placement of a dental implant. First, we'll place our prefabricated surgical guide, which in this case was a duplicate of our transitional S6 appliance. The initial pilot drill is placed toward the palatal aspect of the socket. This is critical as we want to position the implant slightly palately to create a thicker tissue biotype on its uh, buccal aspect. With this orientation, the implant emerges at the single M aspect of the central incisor. We'll then proceed with routine preparation and placement of our dental implant. With the implant in palatal position, we now have about four millimeters from the buccal aspect, which is adequate for development of proper hard and soft tissue. We'll now proceed with the bone graft to the gap between the implant and the buccal bone, and also a soft tissue graft to help preserve and develop a thicker soft tissue. We'll first harvest a connective tissue graft from the palate. For this, a routine full thickness incision is placed at least five millimeters from the gingival margin, followed by a partial thickness incision. The connective tissue graft is then elevated and uh, carefully incised at its base and on its sides, and then ultimately removed. A simple closure with some resorbable sutures is then completed. The gap is now grafted with mineralized bone and covered with resorbable GTR membrane. A screw retained provisional restoration or a customized healing abutment uh, is quite helpful uh, to hold the bone and soft tissue in position and create a more ideal tissue architecture. Alternatively, as in this patient, the site can be grafted and allowed to heal and provisionalize in a delayed fashion once the implant has integrated. To stabilize the connective tissue graft, we'll use a horizontal mattress type suture and pass it through the buccal soft tissue. The graft is then carefully positioned and held in place with several sutures. Transitional prosthesis is then placed and adjusted so that there is a slight contact between the ovate pontic and the overlying tissue. After the initial healing in about two weeks, the pontic can be further modified to better support the soft tissue. I typically allow the implant and the graft to heal for about four months before it is uncovered and prepared for a provisional restoration. Once the proper tissue contour has been achieved, a final crown can be placed.